Hello everybody, welcome into the hobby bar. This is Jason, and welcome. Today we'll be continuing on this Shroud Queen that we've been working on for the past while. And uh, hopefully get her done up. Get the base completed at least. Maybe try some other things. But uh, yeah, we'll get stuck on in. If you do any hobby, feel free to jump on in. Join in. If you don't, that's cool too. First up on the list, we're going to be adding in some purple on the base. So, going in and undercoating different areas because I'm using a crackle paint on this. Um, it's going to be a Citadel a Grella Nerf. Uh, it's a texture paint. It'll break up crackle so you'll see what's below the paint. So you generally want to undercoat it before you paint it. And, uh... Since there's shadowy magic for the cloak, I figure, eh, why not make the undercoat purple? That might be cool. So, that's what we're going to do here is start building up the purple on the base, just around where the cloak touches the base. Um, again, I'm pretty simple when it comes to basing, so we're going to keep it simple and just do this for it. Um, might have to dry brush later, but this stuff takes a long time to dry, so... Not really looking to do that right now. Right now, though, we'll go ahead and crack on with continuing this uh, purple. And then I'll catch up with the all here on the next color when I decide to get that on there. Alright, next up, it's, uh, I believe it's Steel Legion Drab that was left over on the palette. Um, initially I was checking it against Dryad Bark, because usually I use Dryad Bark, and I wanted to put some on, put some down just to see how it would look next to the purple. But Steel Legion Drab's kind of close to the, uh, crackle color, so we're gonna skip on over here to Dryad Bark, and actually use Dryad Bark to cover the base. Because what I like to do is have a much darker color for the recess in between all the uh, crackle effect. So I like to go straight to Dryad Bark for it because the Agrellan Earth looks very similar to the um, Steel Legion Drab, so you can barely tell a difference in there. So just to push the contrast, I like to use Dryad Bark for it. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and crack on getting our first base coat of this on there too. And I'll catch up with you all here in a bit for the next color.
Alrighto, here we are back to the Nagaroth Knight. Adding the purple back onto the base, building it up a little more. A couple thin coats at a time. And, uh, just going around, trying to build up the paint. Maybe add a little bit of overlap and see if it can blend a little bit. Um, uh, it's okay if there's a stark line between the dark brown and the purple areas. Because, again, we're going to cover it with a texture paint. Which is going to cover all of this and other than where it cracks so it'll be fine no big deal if there's not a smooth blend down here below it um but yeah we'll go ahead and crack on with adding on this purple in various areas of the base um don't think i have much feedback about the double speed i think i kind of like running at double speed the whole time so we'll keep cracking on with that um no music is still in effect. Figure it's safer to run no music most of the time. And then you can hobby at your own music. But anyway, we'll go ahead and continue cracking on with this. And I'll catch up with you all here in a bit for the next color. Alrighty, coming back in with some more dryad bark here to build it up a little bit more. Just touch up some areas as well, where I think it needs a little bit more strength for the dark brown. And uh, this will be the last bit of painting on the base for the undercoat before we go ahead and apply the, the ghrelin earth over the whole thing. Yeah, so just want to build up the color, then give it its dry time before we go ahead and get that going. So... Let's get to see how that turns out here in a bit. And now we're going to move on to some red. I wanted to build up the red in the hair, so I broke back out the Crawdaddy Red from Cephalopod Studios. And uh, just because the hair was fairly dark, and I figured, you know, we can add a bit of red here into it. So come back in with this, the Crawfit, Crawdaddy Red, and... Which is a very bright red, but, um, as I've noticed before, as I mentioned before and noticed over time using these cut paints, it's a very thin paint, so, um, it's a very subtle effect that you have to build up, um, since it's over a very dark color. And it takes a few coats, but it'll get there. This way the hair is a little bit brighter than it was before. And in some spots of the bright red over the, uh, over the basiliconum gray that we threw back over everything. But, uh, we'll go ahead and work up the hair a little bit. And I'll catch up with y'all here for the next paint. Alright, oh, we are applying the Gorilla Earth onto the base. Um, giving everything enough time to dry, and now we're gonna come in with the uh, little 
the texture applying tool thing and we'll get it spread out. Now, the idea here is I don't want it to be perfectly even everywhere. I want to leave varying amounts of paint in different areas. So you'll notice that I leave it kind of wavy, kind of imperfect. Um, even though if you try to leave like a big glob somewhere, it'll tend to spread out, I've noticed as well. So you kind of want to leave little spots of texture, kind of vary it up. And then you just got to wait for it to dry because this thing takes a while to dry and set up. So I think I don't come back to it for maybe six hours before I even bother applying wash to it. Like, it takes a while, and this is in a dry climate, so... Yeah, I can just imagine what it's like in other places. Anyway, so... We'll go ahead and try to keep it clean as we're moving around the base. Um, I actually didn't prime the rim of the base on this one. Again, brush on priming. So, I've been trying to just keep it clean and see how I like the look of just the bare plastic versus painting it over with a bad and black. Uh, I might end up priming the rim later and make it a bad and black just to make it uniform with everybody else in the Daughters of Cain that I got. Which, kind of excited because recording the voiceover now, the GW has announced the battle tome for Daughters of Cain and we get some sweet new uh, endless spells, so that'll be cool. But anyway... We'll go ahead and finish working on this stuff for this uh, Shroud Queen and catch up with y'all here on the next color, which is going to be after everything dries, so quite a bit of time later. Um, and we're going to add some wash onto the base just to just to try to darken up the... Uh, sell the effect a little more, I guess I should say. Not really darken it up, just sell the effect of this magical purple stuff over the ground. So anyway, catch you with you all here in a bit for that. Alright, here we are, oh, forgot to turn on the light, here we are with, coming in with some, uh, purple wash from Cephalopod Studios again. Um, I wanted to stick with the wash this time, and I did thin it down a lot with water. This way it's even thinner than it normally would be, because I didn't want it to stain the dirt very much. I had this problem with, um, uh, my pot of, uh, Whatever the purple wash from GW is. I can't remember off the top of my head. But, um, Juki Violet. There we go. Just thought of it. So, th my Juki Violet is kind of thick for whatever reason. And it really stains things. It's more like a contrast paint at this point. But, um, this purple wash seems to work very well. Very subtle. So, I wanted to use it here on the dirt around where the cloak is on the base. Again, kind of going over where it was already purple. 
and it may be hard to see but looking at it in person there was a slight tinge of purple in the dirt already from the base coat underneath so this is just to kind of get in those cracks make it darker and sell the effect a little more since it'll be on top of things kind of like the cloak is on top of the dirt so wanted to come in and do that i also noticed a spot on the shirt i wanted to try to get it a little more purple and clean it up a little so that's why we're touching that part of the mini again <laughs> just can't leave it well enough alone but anyway, wrap up doing the purple wash over everything, and I'm catching up with you all here in a bit for the last call. Nice and short episode today. So, see you all in a bit. Alright, oh, last call everybody. Last call. So, I feel like at this point, Mini's pretty much done. Um, very little bit left to do on it, if much else. Um, might work on one of the other, uh, Minis from this kit. Uh, still got a bunch of them to work on. Off, off camera I've been doing the, uh, the one with the whip from the box. I think it's called a Slaughter Shade. But, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and call this one good enough, and maybe work on one of the others. Maybe get some assembling back in, or just work on maybe one of the other minis I've got lying around. Who knows? But I might add a tuft onto the base as well, just to break up the flatness of it. But maybe not, because there's so much, there's only so much room on the base, and don't want to clog it up too much. Anyway, I think with that, the spin's gone long enough, and yeah, uh, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them below, we can discuss stuff, otherwise, have a good one everybody, take care.